I'm joined by Professor Setha Lowe, who is the director of the Public Space Research Group at the City University of New York. And Setha, you're doing some work now with the Center, uh, the Center for the Future of Places. Can you tell us just a little bit about the work that you're doing right now? Okay. Well, it's nice to be here, Michael. Um, I've really, you know, been really committed in the last couple of years to thinking about public space and social justice. It's become my passion. Um, I spent uh, at the Graduate Center where, you know, I'm a professor of interdisciplinary anthropology, geography, environmental psychology, really been doing research on public space. Forty years of research in Latin America, in Europe, and in the United States, and I've learned so much about how we are in fact losing our public spaces. I don't think it's not the loss of it, but that we're losing them to a lot of different processes that are making it really difficult for people to come together and to have the kinds of relations that I think are really important for the future, for democracy, for a diverse and, and sense of social solidarity. So I was very, very fortunate to meet the people at the Center for the Future of Places, uh, Peter Elman and Tigran Haas and yourself as well. Um, because you had the same kinds of feelings, you had the same kind of idea that you wanted to do something about making sure that public space remains central in our cities for the future. And I don't know, I think I met everyone the first time in Buenos Aires at a conference and I uh, at that point was thinking about trying to develop principles, broad principles about social justice, not just about distribution but thinking about the way we treat each other, about care, about stewardship and the so many aspects of public space that were important and I think you guys we all clicked and here we are now um, here we are now in Kuala Lumpur and I think moving towards trying to think about ways that we can implement some of these ideas some of the research that we both have collected and that I've done myself uh, through the public space research group so you were with us at Habitat 3 a little yeah. over a year ago, uh, and we're now, uh, in, as you said, in Kuala Lumpur at the World Urban Forum. What do you see as the key thing that we need to accomplish here, yeah. all of us here at the, at the forum? Uh, what are the key challenges we face right now? Yeah, um, I think that's a really good question, and I think a lot of us are struggling, and maybe that's whole part of the reason to have this World Urban Forum and to meet one another and to come together, in that I think there are people all over the world um, really committed to trying to free, just, um, democratic, uh, healthy public space. And yet, we're all working separately. We're all doing these things differently. I mean, as I said, I'm an anthropologist. I'm an academic. I'm interested in field studies. I'm working on this great database project in which we're looking at all kinds of research from all the different disciplines and what it can tell us about how to make public space better for everyone in throughout the globe. And yet, at the same time, I know I have counterparts everywhere in the world. And one of the reasons that these meetings are so important and why it's a step beyond um, Habitat 3, where we were able to get public space, right, on the agenda, on the new urban agenda. That was so important. Well, okay, that's there now. Now what do we do about it and how do we prioritize what kinds of interventions? Who's going to do the interventions? In my case, how do I get the, the years of research that either I've done, my colleagues have done, we collectively have done? How do we get it into the design and planning of the new urban world that we're looking at? How do we create um, a really just city, a just city that in which there's public space for all in all the ways possible? I hate to say it, but I don't think we have done enough to bring us all together and to look at what each of us can bring to the table. Are we replicating what we're doing? Are we uh, some, are, are the majority of people planners and designers and architects? Are they talking to people like myself, an academic who now sees herself as kind of a social justice and public space activist? Um, so I'm here trying to meet as many people. Hopefully, collectively, we can pull together and have a much bigger impact than we've been able to over the past, say, 20 years, because now the moment is right, and now we have the backing of the new urban agenda. Now we have UN Habitat. 
with us and leaders from all over the world really caring about the new world we're creating and what can we do to make it better. So one of the interesting uh, issues that we seem to be struggling with is people appreciate public space, but they don't <laughs> necessarily appreciate how important it really is. Yeah. And I think you've been working on that, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, no. <laughs> and actually, um, on the plane coming here, I mean, every time I go anywhere, uh, people are all, I, I try to explain what I do. I, oh, I was at a, I'm a sculptor as well, and I was in a sculpture class on uh, Tuesday. And um, the women around me said, well, you know, why, why public space and social justice? You know, what, what does that, why is that important? Um, I, believe it or not, the simplest question of why public space matters is both the easiest question to answer and yet at another level the very hardest. You can say to people, well, it's where our children bring, come or get grown up. It's where we can get fresh air. It's where families in New York or in Latin America who live in apartments can have huge barbecues and be together. It's a place where we can run and, and uh, be healthy. Um, it's the, they're the lungs of the city, it's the connective tissue. But all of that to everyone seems like, well, you know, they take that for granted in some countries and they're not also imagining neighborhoods in their own cities. Again, I'm going to go back to New York or even San Jose, Costa Rica, where I live. Um, and in fact, there aren't those kinds of places for everyone. And that those are, uh, those are places to work, those are places to connect, those are places of dissent, those are places of communication, they're places of memory, um, and in fact are the fiber of social solidarity for so many communities. And without them, social life would really be bereft. And that's even without touching the kinds of things you are interested in, Michael, which has to do with the connection of uh, parts of the city, of the way we move, of the, of the wildlife corridors, or any of the, the runoff bases, or having green, or all the other kinds of ecological concerns. I mean, I admit that my goal in life, uh, or in my work, and now I, you know, in my career, has been to improve social relations to be tolerant, respectful, just, uh, caring, um, to make our cities uh, even more that way at moments in which it seems like there's so much conflict. If you go into any small part of the city, you can really foster um, new kinds of relations, new kinds of hope, new images of the future. Um, and that's why public space matters. But a lot of the people, at least in the United States that I speak to, maybe less so in Costa Rica or Argentina where I go often, um, will say, but Setha, you know, why through public space? And I go, well, public space is the microcosm of our entire societies. Everything that happens in our worlds, both in terms of meaning and in terms of politics and economics are represented in our public spaces. And if we can make them or create them in a way that's really healthy and viable and vibrant, and in my case, not private necessarily, but truly public for all and truly inclusive for all, I'm imagining that that will also represent the kind of societies that we're creating. Well, we're going to have a great time uh, in our session <laughs> coming up talking about this and other topics. Seth, hello, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.